Hello everybody, before I actually get into the topic, let me just give you a brief introduction about myself. I am Professor Tarun Chaturvedi. I have been lecturing on the subject of direct taxation and international taxation in various business schools in India and uh, abroad, especially in Europe. Uh, I have also lectured extensively with the Chartered Accountants Institute of India in their uh, courses on diplomas in uh, international taxation and transfer pricing. I have also helped him frame the entire course curriculum etc etc. I have authored a few books on the subject of direct taxation and these books are mainly used by the practitioners. Now the idea behind this video is that uh, this video which is a two-part video should effectively act as an aid for the teachers who deliver lectures in taxation. That is the basic idea behind this video and this is the first part of the video. Uh, now I just get into the topic. You see before you start teaching the topic of taxation, it is important for you to explain the importance of taxation to the students so that they start appreciating and are also inquisitive about the topic as the lecture progresses. Now the importance of taxation and especially direct taxation in the life of every individual is known to everybody. But the students must be explained the importance of direct taxation in a corporate as well as at a national level. So you see this particular subject becomes important at a personal level at a corporate level as well as at a national level. At a corporate level, a large amount of corporates consider tax payouts as dead expenses because they do not give rise to a corresponding benefit. As a result of which tax minimization strategies become of paramount importance. Similarly, at the national level, direct taxation accounts for the maximum amount of revenue which a government raises during the year as a result of which tax policy plays a very very crucial role at a national level. It not only helps in increasing the revenues but is also known to be a barometer for uh, industrialization and globalization. While explaining the importance of taxation at the national level, the teachers may effectively use the case study method and the case study can be based on the Vodafone case, which is a glaring example of how a tweak in the tax policy can result in a huge international hue and cry. Now, there may be other examples also, but uh, Vodafone is, 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 is one of the popular examples and a lot of resources regarding that are freely available and hence that may be used in this particular thing. Uh, once the, once the importance of the subject has been explained to the students, we now start moving towards delivering the, 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 the course. In order to effectively control this particular course, it makes sense to break the entire course into five or six modules. The number of modules will depend on the duration of the entire course and, uh, and and how the entire course is to be structured. Whatever be the duration of the course, it makes sense to break the course into five or six modules. The essential reason for breaking it down into modules is that the teacher is able to effectively check the understanding of the student at the end of each module. This understanding may be checked by, by, by any method, maybe MCQs also, or or any other method which the format in which the lecture is being conducted um, um, prescribes. Now let's get into the topic now. You see the the the, the entire uh, subject if it's broken down into modules so, so so let's try and understand how what, what should the modules be and how should they be taught. Module number one uh, should be the introduction to the Bayer Acts, the power of the parliament to enact the Bayer Acts. At this stage, the constitutional interplay between the Bayer Act comes into uh, focus. So the, so, the, so the 
So the interplay between the Constitution and the Bayer Acts must be explained. The rules and regulations, the prescribed rules and regulations must be explained. Their legal force must be explained. The various circulars, notifications which are issued by the Central Board of Direct Taxes, they need to be explained. What is their legal force? Why are they issued? What is their importance in the interpretation of the of the Bayer Act? Uh, during this course, again, a large number of judicial precedents must be culled out and they must be converted into case studies and presented to the students. This way, the students not only get interested in the particular topic, but they also uh, start in understanding the importance of judicial precedents. Tax is an evolving law and its interpretation is largely dependent on the various judicial precedents which are available on various topics. So the more we use the judicial precedents through the case study methods, the students start appreciating the entire importance of this particular uh, uh, aspect of interpretation. So in this module, uh, emphasis should be laid on, uh, on, on, on making the student understand the Bayer Act, the, the, the rules and regulations, the circulars notifications, and also the importance of the Annual Finance Act. While explaining the importance of the Annual Finance Act, the, the importance of the budget speech of the Finance Minister, the memorandum explaining the provisions of the Finance Bill, how the bill comes into force and becomes an act, all this must be explained. All this actually forms the basis of understanding um, which, will, which, will, which will help the students as we progress. The second module essentially should consist of explaining the structure of the Income Tax Act and also the structure of the rules and regulations. In this part, the important provisions which deal with definitions and the taxation base of the country should be culled out from the Act and explained to the student. This becomes important because uh, in the definition phase, the terms which are which are explained will be used in the in the in the future modules hence it becomes extremely important for the teacher to 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 impress upon the students the various judicial precedents by which these definitions have been interpreted and not only indian judicial precedents but certain foreign judicial precedents can also be used in this particular module an in-depth understanding at this stage helps the student to appreciate these terms as and when they come up once the modules start going forward. This, this is a this is this is an important basic module, and uh, and the and the and the understanding of this module must be checked. And if there's a deficiency in understanding, some makeup classes may be, may be incorporated if the overall course structure permits. Now, um, once the first module, this, this particular module is over, the students should now be graduated into understanding what is computation of taxable income, how are taxes computed, etc., etc. One of the huge problems which exist in teaching this computation of income as well as the computation of tax is that a uh, large amount of accounting is thought to be involved. In reality, there is no accounting involved. While teaching this particular module, care should be taken to explain to the students that accounting is the job of an accountant while, while, while the law student is supposed to interpret the legal or the or the or the points of law which are which are operating behind these computational provisions so the structure the relationship between various heads of income the relationship between the heads of income and the taxable income etc should be explained from a legal point of view again like in the previous modules we should call out the important judicial precedents convert them into case studies and try and use the case study methodology so that the students are able to appreciate the subjects better. You know, this is one aspect where the classification of income into different heads is done. Now, if this classification is understood by students correctly, 
right a large part of the understanding of the income tax act becomes clear but again i repeat that one should not feel that there's a large amount of accounting and be bogged down with it the teaching needs to be centered around the legal concepts and not the accounting concepts another important aspect of this module is the various rules and regulations which are involved in the computation of taxable income this is so because a large amount of uh, procedures are involved and uh, 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 this is a procedural part as a this is a procedural part as a result of which what happens is that the students get bogged down in rules regulations and procedures and miss out the legal aspects care should be taken that the rules regulations and procedures are known to the students but more importantly they understand the legal concepts which are behind these entire provisions um again the judicial references not only of india but of abroad should be brought in and should be explained in this particular module now the fourth module generally should consist of the assessment and the appellate proceedings this is an entirely procedural part of the income tax act but is an important part so once the students have learned to appreciate the legal aspects of income computation etc now they should be introduced to the various procedural parts which are involved in assessments as well as appellate appellate proceedings what are the assessing authorities what powers they have how can they exercise their powers when does a writ come into play etc etc are issues which need to be explained here there are different appellate authorities which are which exist under the income tax act and all of them have separate powers increasingly uh, the government is moving towards a faceless assessment as well as faceless faceless appellate proceedings so these concepts should also be explained but again these are procedures and the student should not be bogged down with too much of these kind of procedures the important things that need to be explained in this module is the is the is the relevance of uh, written submissions which are made at the assessment levels how are they to be used as the litigation progresses up the appellate authorities what are the powers of the different appellate authorities what is the difference between a point of law and a point of fact which authorities are the final authorities which deal with the point of fact all these issues need to be called out and explained to the students because it is important for the students to appreciate that uh that that income tax deals with points of fact as well as points of law and different authorities have different powers regarding these two with this i finish my module 4 uh, and the other modules i'll carry over in the next part of the video thank you